I love spiders, including giant ones like this Goliath Tarantula. But if you watch Hollywood movies, you come away with the impression that spiders are deadly, menacing creatures. They think about nothing, you know. These are deadly killers. I mean, they're out in the middle of the night and they're going to come into your house, into your apartment, into your room, crawl up onto your bed and sting you with their venom, bite you, sink their big fangs right inside of you. That's the image that Hollywood portrays in their movies. I even saw it in the 1960s, James Bond with Sean Connery. He's sleeping on his bed in the tropics and suddenly there's spiders, tarantulas all over him. And here's big, tough James Bond freaking out. Ah, it's a spider! Help me! Help me! It's not that way at all. They're gentle, soft. They want to get away from people. They don't want to be bothered. But that's not an interesting story. That won't sell films, that won't sell movies. So you gotta create this image about it. You gotta scare people. You know, giant eight-legged freaks are coming in early science fiction movies. They've been made to look the size of houses. They come crawling all over to get at the poor people. But in reality, it's people that pose a threat to them. I also like snakes. Not in the sense that I want to keep them as pets, but I understand that they serve a purpose in our world. They get rodents, they catch mice, rats, all the rodents that are harmful to us. But what, what do we do in turn? We villainify, we make them into villains. Snakes are the villains, they're the bad guys. They're slimy. Well, first of all, if you've ever held a snake, you'll know that they're not slimy. We still make them out to be that. I mean, even the Bible, you know, like what was the evil one in the Garden of Eden tempting uh, Eve? It was a snake, the evil snake. And in movies, you know, like planes and snakes and all these different things, snakes are the evil ones. For the most part, snakes just want to be left alone, away from us all, living their life. But we kill them. Some places they eat them. Some places they have markets where you can go and buy snakes alive and they're hung upside down. Then they are cut so they bleed into a cup and you get to drink their warm blood. So who is the villain in that picture? We make boots and purses and wallets out of them. To the point where in some areas some of the species of snakes are now becoming extinct. I like them. Many strange creatures on our planet. Some of them look like they're remnants of the dinosaur age. Hard to imagine that they survive for millions, tens of millions of years. Without our interference or without our help, how could they do that? Small ones with curly tails. Sitting on a sidewalk watching the ocean. This was in Cuba. And I don't know what kind of lizard it is. I just call it a curly tail because there were lots of them around. They had these curly tails and they would run around. And they will keep running around if we don't harm them. If we understand them. And we understand that they have a place in our world. These creatures have adopted, adapted to so many different things like this one. When it climbed up a tree, it virtually changed its green color to the same as the bark of the tree. while other ones were completely green, matching into the color of the leaves of the plants. And in an instant, a small fluttering butterfly becomes dinner for them.
It's not brutal nature, it's not anything to be afraid of. It hunts to survive, like the lizards have for millions of years. We were standing by the bushes to photograph the butterfly. I didn't even see the lizard. But in a split second, in a split second, it, it got that butterfly. He's turning him to get him into his mouth. I love watching nature and seeing it in real, not in televisions or shows, but being there to observe it firsthand. I love the creatures of the sea. And if we were to see what's happening to dolphins in video, on TV, and be subjected to it, there would be a huge outcry, but a lot of what's happening to them is out of sight and out of mind. In Taji, Japan, dolphins by the tens of thousands are being herded into a small cove where they are murdered. We're talking about Flipper. Everyone, you know, like if you're old enough to remember Flipper, or if you ever dreamt about going down to the Pacific or into the uh, Caribbean and swimming with dolphins and, and interacting because they're so intelligent. Imagine there's wonderful creatures that have no, been known to save humans in distress, being slaughtered. What a panic the herd must feel as one by one they are clubbed and speared to death. Our inhumanity to creatures around us is beyond belief. I mean, we've, we do that in Canada with seals, club the baby seals to death. In Africa, elephants are hunted for their ivory. I saw recently a picture of a rhinoceros still alive after its horn was cut off by poachers. Still most animals, fish, creatures just want to be left alone. Or else they can also become used to man. In the Caribbean, I was swimming with fish for a week and I would take food down for them, feed them. And as soon as I got into the water, even though you didn't see any fish, they would suddenly congregate. They'd be all around me because they, I don't know, they recognized that I, I didn't pose a threat and that I had brought food. But this one particular day, I didn't bring any. And they're still hanging around. So I decided to see what would happen if I started swimming away, which is what I did. And the fish were swimming along beside me. It's not a large aquarium. This is the open ocean. And I felt like I was on top of the world as I was swimming along with all these fish swimming right beside me. When I was young, I had aquariums, and I loved sitting by it for hours sometimes. I, I mean, really, that shows how boring a life I led when I was young. But I would sit there, and I would watch the fish. I had guppies and neons and all these different little ones. And now I was in the world's largest aquarium, swimming along real coral formations with real tropical fish. Nothing compares to that. And yet we're polluting and killing the oceans. In some places the coral is now just, it's, it's like a barren ground. I mean, it's, it's bleached, it's white, and it's all dead. Coral are living creatures. They filter the ocean. Imagine your aquarium if you didn't have a filter on it what the water becomes like, how the glass gets all gunked up. We're doing that to the oceans. Going into a forest with my camera. I didn't have any food with me, no bird seeds or anything like that. But this little wild chickadee came and landed on my finger, not once or twice, but over and over. It would fly further away, so I became curious to see from how far away would he come back? And at this one point, he was probably about 100 feet away. He didn't fly directly to my hand. He flew to a branch close by, and then from that again, right back onto my finger.
I don't know what went through its mind. Why it would do that. I mean, look at the size, you know, like... It, it should have been afraid, flying away. Amphibians. I've talked about this already in a couple of videos. Amphibians are becoming uh, extinct. They are going extinct. Half the amphibians in the world are going extinct. A fungus has infected frogs. It is killing them around the world. I watched the television show showing these absolutely beautiful yellow frogs from Panama. And the researcher was saying that one day they were out there collecting them to preserve them. The sounds of them could be heard all over. The next day they went out. The next day and it was silence and all the frogs had turned upside down. They were dead. Funguses wiping them out and it's happening even in British Columbia. I cannot imagine our planet if we lose half the species on it. And yet, again, like I said, I read in the recently about elephants and how they're being slaughtered again for their ivory. How one, eye, one horn of a rhinoceros can go for as much as $250,000 in Asia to be ground up for medicine. And it's sad that the more animals that are poached and the less animals that are left living in the wild the higher the price will go and the more chances people will take to kill them we've got to support the animals wildlife funds anything like that you got to support nature it's the only one we have thank you